kanyang antichrist niya sa paglitaw. And in the first place, wala naman pong kaya at pwedeng pumigil dyan sa antichrist niya kung hindi ang Holy Ghost lang. Because the Holy Ghost is God Himself or the Spirit of God Himself. In fact, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, basahin po natin. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Brothers and sisters, more than 2,000 years ago, nandiyan na pong spirit ng Antichrist. Ang tanong, bakit di ni makalitaw ang Antichrist na yan? Dahil nga po sa Holy Ghost. At naniniwala po ba kayo kung hindi dahil sa Holy Ghost, matagal na lumitaw yan at nagpakilala na. Pero bakit ang tagal-tagal na, wala pa din? Bakit hindi pa rin makalitaw? May pumipigil pa. And that is the Holy Ghost. In fact, pati po ang gawa ng Antichrist, pigil pa yan. Medya-medya lang, papektus-pektus lang yan eh. Ang ginagawa niya nakasamaan, at talagang kumbaga sa ano, hindi pa niya binupuruhan eh. Ganun lang siya kumilos, hindi pa kumikilos ang lubusan. Dahil kung yung exact na gustong gawin ni Satanas, ang gagawin niya sa mundo, matagal nang namatay sa hirap ang mga tao pagdating sa physical, sa mental, sa emotional, at sa pinansyal. Matagal na namatay ang tao. Nakatulad nga po na sinabi po sa Book of Revelation, yung pong pahirap na gagawin ng David sa tao kapag pinawalan niya po yung mga demonyo na nakakulong sa bottomless pit. Ibig sabihin, yung pong mga nangyayaring kasamaan ngayon ay sample pa lang po ng gagawin niyang pahirap. Bakit hindi niya magawa? May pumipigil ang Holy Ghost. And second, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, it says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved, take note of the word preserved, by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So another meaning of preserved by the same word is that the word of God or ang salita ng Diyos is one of the reasons why the devil cannot totally inflict the worst destruction on mankind. Hindi siya makaporma ng gusto, hindi siya makapanira ng gusto. And because there are a lot of Christians who fight back against the words of the devil through the power of the word of God and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, kaya hindi po makaporma yan. Dahil yung mga anak ng Diyos, yung mga Kristiyano, yung mga believers, patuloy na lumalaban at hanggat lumalaban po tayo, hindi makakaporma yan. Meaning, kung hindi dahil sa Holy Spirit, hindi natin masisikmura yung sobrang kasamaan na gagawin ng Antichrist sa mga tao sa mundo. Kaya nga po para po sa akin, yan po ang isa sa pinakamatinding rolyo ng Holy Spirit sa world at sa mga tao sa buong mundo. Now, moving forward in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. And then, The lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. Take note, the breath of his mouth, ang sabi, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, in the second use of the word spirit, mga kapatid, the Bible speaks about the breath of his mouth. In Greek, it reads, pneuma, which is translated as spirit by King James Version, but is rendered as breath by most English translations. So take note, karamihan po ng mga English translations na binabasa po natin ay breath po ang ginamit po nila. But the possible semantic range of meaning for pneuma or yung spirit po is wind, unang-una, sumunod, breath, And next is spirit. Yan po yung iba't ibang meanings po niyan. And it is possible na ito pong King James Version should be followed here with the spirit of his mouth. Referring to the Holy Spirit. And this would be similar po sa, sa Revelation chapter 19 verse 15. Basahin po natin. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword 
that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So this verse shows that Christ returns on a white horse and from whose mouth goes with a sharp sword. Uulitin ko, from whose mouth goes with a sharp sword. At ano gagawin niya? With it, he would strike the nation. Yan ang gagawin ng Panginoon. Meaning, he will strike and destroy the nations who will fight against him by the power of his word that will come out of his mouth. While in the church of Thessalonians, Paul may have had the messianic prophecy of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4. It says, But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Ito pong si Prophet Isaiah said that the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Yan po ang sabi niya. It could be na ito po si Pablo or Paul's second letter to the church of Thessalonians Ang nasa isip po ni Pablo was the powerful words that will come from the mouth of the conquering king upon his second coming. Yung po malamang po ang nasa isip po ni Paul. At ganyan po katindi ang power ng salita ng Diyos na inspired ng Holy Spirit. Now, brothers and sisters, let's go to the third use of, of the word spirit in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Paul spoke about sanctification by the Spirit. Yan po ang sabi niya. Which Peter also mentioned in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Basahin natin. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. Tanong, what does the Bible mean by sanctification? Ano ba ibig sabihin ng Bible dito? Alam po ninyo, there is a big difference between the Old Testament and New Testament images of sanctification. Malaki po ang pagkakaiba po niyan. Una, ang Old Testament sanctification po is pictured by ceremonial rituals that picture holiness in obedience to the moral law of God. Ganyan po sa Old Testament. While sa New Testament naman po, the focus shifts or nagpalit po from external and cultic. Pag sinabi natin cultic, medyo extreme po sila yung mga religious sect po. Generally considered uh, to be extremists of, or of false. So, ito po ang nangyari, nag-shift po siya from external and cultic action to personal spiritual life. And the imagery becomes more varied. In a cluster of Old Testament passages speak of people or priests sanctifying themselves. By what? By conscious action, usually as prescribed by the ceremonial law. So kung, 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 ano, kung ano yung sinasabi po ng ceremonial law, yun po ang sinusundan po nila. Pero yung pong primary meaning is setting apart from either common use or sinful practice such as Washing of various kinds. Andiyan po yung paghuhugas po ng mga kagamitan or, or any part of the, the, the body. Not touching contaminated physical objects. Yung pong pagbabawal sa, o sa paghipo, sa patay, na ta, or pati sa hayo, pinagbabawal po. Or ganyan din po yung avoiding spiritual contamination through intermarriages. Yung hindi po pag-aasawa na hindi po kalahi. And even in observing that the showbread in the temple must be set apart. And the Sabbath day was set apart a day from other days. So while if we are going to read the book of Proverbs, it gives an ever-expanding picture of what the sanctified life looks with emphasis and the moral conduct. So ito pong book of Proverbs po ay nagsasalarawan po ng kung ano po yung buhay ng isang sanctified life. And for your information, 
the New Testament images from sanctification are much less cultic. So, mas bawas na po yung pagiging extreme than the Old Testament images. Even the imagery of sanctification that is carried forward from the Old Testament went under a transformation as when the temple ceased to be sacred, a sacred site in Jerusalem. So, ano ibig sabihin? Yung idea po ng sanctification as being made holy or yung pong pagsasanctify upang maging banal na magmula po sa Old Testament ay nagkaroon po ng pagbabago na katulad po ng paghinto po sa pagconsider sa Jerusalem na isang sacred na lugar o templo. So instead, the temple became the individual person na po or the fellowship of believers na in the New Testament. So meaning to say, mga kapatid, Pagdating sa New Testament, tao na po ang temple of God na sinasanctify. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So meaning, mga kapatid, the basic premise or basis of the New Testament sanctification is that individuals are first sanctified by faith in Christ. In Acts chapter 26, verse 18, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Ang sabi po, who are sanctified by faith in me. Second, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. But take note, at naniniwala po ako, that the power of such sanctification comes from the Holy Spirit. So, sa Holy Spirit lang po talaga manggagaling ang ganyang klase ng kapangyarihan. Kaya nga sa Romans chapter 15, verse 16, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And also in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. So in other words, the sanctification of Christians, believers, cannot be done without the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hindi po talaga uubra pag wala po ang Holy Spirit po sa atin. Mahirap. Maaring ngayon, makapag-display po tayo ng pagbabago. Tapos, bibitaw na sa mga susunod na panahon. And I believe, the Holy Spirit not only restrains the revealing yet of the Antichrist, hindi lang po yan, but also restrains as Christians. Saan? To those or to do those things na pang-Antikristo. Tulad po ng mga kasalanan na nasusulat mo sa Biblia. In fact, the essential pattern is twofold. Ano ibig sabihin po nito? So, una, it is done by avoiding sin. Pangalawa, by the positive practice of virtue. So pag sinabi natin virtue, it means a behavior showing high moral standards. And one cluster of images mo accordingly pictures the action of separating oneself from evil. O yung pong paghihiwalay po ng sarili po natin sa kasamaan. Kaya nga po, yung sanctification here is a matter of, unang-una, casting of evil practices. Yung pong pagtanggal daw sa mga masasamang gawain. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off. Uulitin ko, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So we need to cast 
off or cast out the work of darkness in our lives. Hate the darkness of evil sa buhay po natin. Ibig sabihin, kamuhian po natin ang lahat ng klase ng kasamaan. Second, shunning immorality or yung pag-iwas daw po sa immoralidad. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Ang sabi po rito ng talatang binasa natin, flee sexual immorality. Takbuhan mo kahit tinutukso ka, layuan mo, tumakbo ka, umalis ka dyan, lumayo ka dyan. For example, naalala niyo po si Joseph na, na tinutukso po ng asawa po ni Potipar. Hindi lang po immorality sa sex yan, kung hindi immorality pagdating sa pera. Anything that is illegal na pinasok natin, yan po'y immoral sa harapan po ng Diyos. Kaya nga po, wag po tayong papatukso kahit sa pera. Mapasex man yan, mapapera man yan, takbuhan po natin dahil immoral po yan sa harapan ng Diyos. Pangatlo, putting off the old nature. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. That you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So, hubarin mo daw yung kung dati mong ugali, yung kung dati yung masama yung ugali mo, kagaya po yung pagiging magagalitin, maiin, mainitin ng ulo, mainisin, palamura, palasigaw, konting kibot, sigaw kagad, kon, konting kibot na naman, mura kagad, yung pong pagiging madamot, hubarin daw natin yung chismoso, chismosa, Hubarin na po natin yan. Daing pa po natin yung po mga reporters. Tanggalin po natin yan. What else? Pang-apat. Laying aside every weight of sin. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Ang sabi, lay aside every weight. And the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Alisan daw po natin yung lahat ng mga klase ng mga kasalanan na nagpapabigat po sa atin. Yan po yung nagpapabagal po sa atin sa takbo natin bilang mga Kristiyano. And the worst thing, mga kapatid, to happen to us, pag hindi, po, pag hindi tayo makatapos ng karera, pag hindi po natin inalis yung mga bagay na yan, yung mga kasalanan na yan na, na nagpapabigat po sa atin, hindi tayo makarating sa kaharian ng, ng ating Panginoon. And whether you like it or not, kailangan tanggalin po natin ito. Lahat ng mga kasalanan ay alisin natin kahit anong uri ng kasalanan pa yan. Malaki, maliit ang gusto ng Diyos. Makatapos ka ng karera, makarating ka sa, ka, sa kaharian niya. But on the other hand, sanctification involves producing something that was not present before. So, ibig sabihin ng sanctification po, yung po yung wala sa'yo po dati. Na kailangan magkaroon ka na dahil nga sanctified ka na. What are they? First, maturity. Sanctification is a matter of maturing into adulthood and being no longer a child. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 to 14. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So hanggang sa dumating po tayo sa pagkakaisa at pagkakaroon po ng kaalaman tungkol sa anak ng Diyos, hanggang sa umabot tayo sa pagiging perpekto sa harapan ng ating Panginoon, hanggang sa tayo ay maging katulad na mismo ni Kristo. Then next po, verse 14, that we should no longer be children para hindi na daw tayo manatiling tulad ng bata. Tossed to and fro and cared about with every wind of doctrine na tinatangay-tangay lang po tayo ng ibang doktrina. By the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. So sa pamamagitan po ng pandaraya ng mga tao na mapanling lang na tao. That is why if we are sanctified, makakaiwas po tayo sa lahat ng yan. Now second, Growth, sanctification 
will make you not just grow, but grow in grace. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. Hindi lamang po sa madami po tayong head knowledge, mga kapatid, kundi po sa heart knowledge. Aanuhin po natin yung ang dami nating alam na detalye pag balibalik tayo mong Bible, memorize na memorize lahat. Ng mga facts, figures, datas, yung mga events sa Bible, yung lahat ng mga biblical history. Tapos, yung tinutunan Turo natin na basic, katulad ng love your enemy, ay hirap po tayo. Alam niyo po, sa totoo lang po, hindi po padamihan po ng alam sa salita ng Diyos. But rather, padamihan po na maia-apply na salita ng Diyos sa ating pong buhay. Dahil aanuhin po natin na ang dami nating alam. Lahat na nga alam na po natin eh pero hindi naman natin may apply sa ating sarili. Hindi natin may apply sa ating buhay. Wala rin po yan. Tulad din ng ano, you will grow in grace. In the sense, your word will be full of grace and mercy, even to your offender. Ibig sabihin yung salita mo ay pirmi nagbibigay ng liwanag, pirmi nagbibigay ng pag-asa, nagbibigay ng biyaya sa mga sa bawat tao na makausap mo, kung sino man yung makaharap mo, yan po ang nangyayari, nagbibigay ka ng kalakasan sa kanya. Kaya nga po pag ang kausap mo na instead na lumakas sa faith, ay lalong humina. Ibig sabihin ay wala po yung biyaya po sa salita po natin. Pangatlo, godliness. So, sanctification will make you abound more and more in godliness. Philippians chapter 1, verse 19. Yes, and I shall rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Ibig sabihin, magiging makadyos tayo. Hindi po relilyoso. Magkaiba po yun. Kapag sinabi po natin makadyos, uunahin natin ang bilin at utos ng Diyos sa Bible ng ating pong binabasa. The Bible teaches to honor your father and mother. This we do. The Bible teaches to submit to governing authorities. This we do. Ang Panginoon po or the Lord Jesus says, if someone asks of you to walk one mile, Go and walk for two. Gawin mong dalawang milya, yung lalakarin mo. Ano pa? The Lord teaches, judge not that ye be not judged. This, we strive to do. Piliti natin gawin. At napakarami pa po. Religion per se is all, is all but ordinances and rituals. But godliness is intense relationship with our Savior. Yan po yan. An intense relationship shows in our encouraging behavior and attitude toward others. Attending and going to church is one, mga kapatid, but applying actively what we have learned inside the church is another. Simply put, going to church is, is, is religion but applying or doing the spiritual message na naririnig po natin from time to time, na naririnig natin, tinuturo sa atin, pinipreach sa atin ng ating beloved bishop, ng ating mga teachers, that is godly pag ina-apply po natin. Pangapat, love. Sanctification will make you increase and abound in love. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to another and to all men as we do to you. Meaning, mag-uumapaw at patuloy na madadagdagan na madadagdagan ang pag-ibig mo sa Diyos at sa kapwa mo or sa ibang tao. At alam niyo po, isa sa mabigat na ibig sabihin ng love sa kapwa is loving the unlovable. Alam niyo po, mahirap at mabigat po na challenge po yan. Normal po sa atin magmahal ng mga pleasant people. But annoying ones. What for? Why waste, why waste so much energy with these people who are irritating and, and are critics? However, just the same. 
what credit is is that to us if we can only love those people and accept those people who are easy to love and accept kaya nga po padamihan nga po ng application ng Bible yung mga binabasa po natin napapakinggan po natin linggo-linggo kahit na nga po na namimilipit na, na po tayo sa hirap sa pag-a-apply po ng mga napapakinggan po natin at nai-stretch na po yung ating pong patience pati yung understanding po natin banat na banat na po dahil nga sa sanctified people po tayo, we are obliged to display and increase an abundance of love in this manner. Panglima, good deeds. Sanctification will make you rich in good deeds. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 18. They are to do good, to be rich in good deeds. Grabe, ang yaman mo sa paggawa ng mabuti sa iba. Liberal and generous. Pero sa ganyan lang ba ang liberality, mga kapatid? You know what, honestly speaking, madami po uh, sa panahon po natin ngayon na hirap, hirap na hirap gumawa ng mabuti. Kasi nga po madalas na iisip po natin to do good is to give. At least something. Money or, or material thing. But in this moment of crisis, we can show active goodness by actively praying for other people. We can join the MGC, yung ating pong daily prayer. Hindi ka man makapagbigay dahil kapos ka rin, wala ka rin ibibigay na, na, na pambigay. Pero, nakakatulong ka sa pamamagitan ng ano, na pag ikaw ay nananalangin, kumakatok ka sa pinto ng langit, Lord, tulungan mo yung kapatid ko, Lord, tulungan mo yung kaibigan ko, Lord, tulungan mo yung nanay ko, Lord, tulungan mo yung mga kapatiran, kumakatok ka sa pamamagitan ng pananalangin, hindi ka man nagbibigay ng pera, hindi ka man nagbibigay ng material na bagay, but by this you are doing or you are also giving something. You give time to pray and pray and pray for someone. And praying for someone or intercessory prayer is not a small matter. Pinapaalam ko po sa inyo, mga kapatid. Hindi po maliit na bagay. Malaking bagay po yan. It is absolutely a good Did in the sight of God. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, ang gawang mabuti through giving and sharing your blessings to others is not only through material giving, but spiritual giving also. That means, kung tunay po tayong sanctified ng Holy Spirit, dapat nasa atin po yung limang bagay na binanggit ko po sa inyo. Wala po sa atin yung apat na evil things na sinabi ko nung una. So now, I'll leave you with this question. Are you sanctified by the Holy Spirit? Alam po ninyo, we need to evaluate ourselves. If we have the good qualities and we have gotten rid of the evil qualities, tignan po natin, check po natin yung ating pumasarili. It might be a struggle, but one thing is for sure, brothers and sisters, ang sanctification ay hindi po mangyayari po sa atin without the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Kaya nga po, we need to have the desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit para masanctify po tayo ng gusto at makakilos po ang Holy Spirit po sa buhay po nating lahat. And this is the Holy Spirit in action in the book of Second Thessalonians. So at this moment, brothers and sisters, tayo po'y magpasalamat po sa ating Panginoon na minsan pa, tinuruan na naman po tayo ng ating Diyos na buhay at naway may apply po natin ito. Hindi lang po basta natin napakinggan, kundi pilitin po natin na maipamuhay po natin yung bawat salita ng Diyos ng ating napapakinggan na katulad po na sinabi ko kanina, paramihan po ng application. So, yuko po natin ng ating mga ulo, tayo po'y malalain sa ating Diyos na buhay. Panginoong Yesus, Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga salita mo. Salamat muli, pinuno mo na naman kami ng Holy Spirit mo. Pinakita mo po sa amin kung gano'n po ka-importante ang Rapture Day, 
ang restrainer na kami kukunin mo, hindi mo kami padadanasin ng great tribulation. Higit sa lahat, tinuruan mo kami kung papaano namin kailangan i-apply ang lahat ng aming mga naririnig. Yes, Lord, minsan mahirap. Tao lang kami. But through the power and the help of your Holy Spirit, alam po namin na kaya po namin itong mga bagay nito. Lord, isanctify mo kami, Panginoon, for us to take away or to put off, to cast away lahat ng mga masasamang gawain. Alisin po namin sa aming mga buhay. But rather, ang magawa po namin, yung mga bagay na nakakalugod po sa iyo, we want to grow more in love, to be mature in you, grow more in, in good deeds, abound sa mga bagay na magaganda, abound in grace, tulungan mo kami, Panginoon. Dahil hindi po namin magagawa to, kundi dahil sa Holy Spirit mo. At dalangin ko, Panginoon, sa mga anak mo na nandirito, na nakikinig ngayon. Hayaan mo each and every day of our lives, yung Holy Spirit mo ang pumunog po sa aming mga buhay. Maraming maraming salamat po. We give back all the glory, the honor, and the praises in your most precious and wonderful name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And to all our viewers po, katulad po na sinabi ko po sa inyo, if we want to be sanctified, kailangan pong kumilos po ang Holy Spirit po sa ating buhay. At kung gusto po natin that the Holy Spirit uh, can move in our lives, we must have Jesus in our lives. Kaya alam po ang tanong, how are you going to have Jesus in your life? First, you need to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. to Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive and in which you stand by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preach to you unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, the Gospel of Christ is about the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we need to believe. Kailangan maniwala po tayo sa Gospel po ng ating Panginoon. Kaya alam po, right after we believe, hindi po dyan natatapos. We need to apply this Gospel to ourselves sa paano pong paraan by obeying the Gospel. Kailangan sundin po natin yan. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, first is repentance. Para masunod po natin yung gospel ng ating Panginoon, first, unang-unang step po is we need to repent. It symbolizes the death of Christ. Tayo naman po'y magsisisi po ng ating po mga kasalanan. So, para bagang pinapatay naman po natin ng ating mga kasalanan, kasabay naman po ng pagkamatay ng ating Panginoon. So, ibig sabihin po, pag tayo po'y nagre-repent, Ibig sabihin, kailangan po ano, na magkaroon ng total change po sa atin. Kailangan nandun yung buong puso na pagbabago. At naniniwala po ako, malaki or maliit na nagawa mo sa harapan ng ating Diyos. Basta as long as nandun yung genuine na repentance, the Lord is willing and able to forgive your sin. Ang importante lang sa Panginoon, nandun yung taus-puso mo na pagsisisi ng iyong kasalanan. That is the first step, we need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. 
which symbolizes the burial of Jesus Christ. Tayo naman po ibabautismuhan sa tubig. So ilulubog po tayo sa tubig in the name of Jesus Christ. At yan naman po kasabay naman po ng paglilibing kay Kristo. So para bagang inililibing naman po natin ang ating mga kasalanan kasabay ng paglilibing sa ating Diyos. At yan po hindi po paghuhugas po ng katawan kundi yan po ay nakakapag-alis po ng kasalanan. So, importante po that we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and that is the second step. And third, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit which symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus Christ or yung muli pong pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoon after three days. In fact, once we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're also receiving power. Alam ko po marami po sa inyo, gusto niyo po magbago. Pero hirap na hirap kayo. Hindi nyo alam kung papaano. But you know what? Once you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit, yan po yung tutulong po sa atin para makapagpago. Yan po yung tutulong po sa atin para makasunod sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon. Kaya nga po sanctified. So yan po ang kailangan mangyari po sa atin. Unang-una, we need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And thirdly, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we call the good news. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So at this moment, sa lahat mo ng gustong tumanggap sa ating Diyos sa buhay, pwede po ba na itas po ninyo inyong dalawang kamay bilang tanda ng pagsuko sa ating Diyos? Yuko po ninyo inyong mga ulo and please repeat after me with this prayer. Panginoong Jesus, lumalapit po ako sa iyo bilang isang makasalanan Patawarin mo po ako sa lahat ng aking magpagkakamali at pagkukulang. Sa oras na ito, tinatanggap po kita bilang sariling nagapagligtas at tinatanggap po kita bilang Diyos ng aking buhay. Naniniwala po ako na ikaw ay namatay, ikaw ay nilibing, at sa ikatlong araw ay nabuhay na magmuli. Tulungan mo po ako makapagsimula ng bagong buhay at itagdag mo po ako sa iyong kaharian. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. So sa lahat po ng interested po, magpababtize. Andiyan po ang mga telephone numbers po natin sa baba po ng mga screens po ninyo. Pwede po kayong tumawag po dyan para magpa-schedule po tayo ng water baptism. So again, on behalf of our beloved Bishop, marami salamat po for this opportunity. God bless every one of you and to God be all the glory. Siya'y nakila Ako'y nananampalataya Tunay ang kanyang salita Si Jesus wala na